Hi guys, this is Get to Know God Q and A session number four. And the question we want to tackle today is: Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen to good people? Um, you kind of sometimes have run into this question for yourself, right? Sometimes you you run into some really bad bad situations in your life. Or you hear some really bad news, and you wonder that you really haven't done anything really that sinful in this life, or at least that far. And then you kind of realize that, but why is God letting this happening to me? Why why couldn't God prevent this from happening in my life, or to some people who have lived a quite good morally good life, or people who are like a Christian and they lived a quite you know good life, faithful life. I have a an incident when I when I was uh, running a college ministry back in Denver. Um, there was a, a, a student leader of mine um, who was a, a youth group teacher in his, te- his his church, and he came to me one time. He was like bawling. He was literally like crying, and he was asking like he was telling me that one of his youth students who was such a good mannered uh, such a good student and who was a very faithful uh, young man of god uh, have recently died in a car accident and he asked me why does god let these type of bad things happen to the ones that are faithful and good why didn't he pre- if he, if he god is the god of love why didn't he prevent that from happening to him in situations like that, you, you don't have a clear answer. I, I didn't have a clear answer. What, what kind of answer could comfort people like that, right? Um, in, in times like that, in case if you ever run into that, the best thing you can do is just hurt with them. You know, share their pain with them, cry with them. Um, that's the best, best thing you can do to comfort them and help them. But whoever goes through those type of tragedies in life, hard times in life, um, we need time of, of, re- of recovering. We need time to kind of step away from that pain and then find hope in life, right? And to do that, we need to know the scriptural based like uh, the description of how we should interpret why do bad things happen to kind of all people, right? To do that, we got to kind of go into Genesis chapter 3. Um, when we go to Genesis chapter 3, oh, whoops, this is Korean. Uh, when we go to Genesis chapter 3, uh, we can actually see what happens to this world. Not only to just the, the you know, the Adam and Eve and to the mankind, but we actually see what happens to the believer. It says, cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat, and then so on and so forth, right? So in the beginning, what does it say? It says, cursed is the ground because of you. So when Adam and Eve sinned, it didn't just affect Adam and Eve. It didn't affect the mankind, you and I. We were not the only one who received the curse from God and who received the punishment for that and died in eternity, right? But then the ground and the entire earth was cursed because of our disobedience and our sin. It's because Adam and Eve were supposed to be the manager, they're the the steward and the, the keeper of Garden of Eden, right? But then they failed at that. So as a result, when Adam and Eve sin, um, the ground gets cursed. And within the last like, about 6,000 years, because based on the Bible's timeline, the earth is about 6,000 years. So if you kind of count that for the last 6,000 years or so, the earth has been cursed in a larger magnitude because we have more people who sin in a greater magnitude today. So over the 6,000 years, it was more cursed. And this world is, 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 is basically um, doing all these sinful things, harmful things because of that curse. And for that, the tragedy happens to everyone that lives on this earth. And then for that, Satan has the grasp of the authority over this world. Satan has the power to rule in this world. 
Satan has the power of influence of sin in the hearts of the people. So unless we can completely be cut off from the sin, uh, the influences of sin, and unless we can, we can completely be cut off from the consequences of our sin, then we are living in this world where it will consistently and constantly over time will be cursed and will be harmful to us time to time. Now, there's one more thing that we want to tackle. The question says, why do bad things happen to good people? But we have to interpret this word good people in a correct way. There's no, there's no good that is really good in the eyes of God as long as it has sin in it. So nobody in this world is good enough in the eyes of God. Everybody sins. When we say good people, we're basically saying that relatively they're more ethical people than others. Sometimes we say they're better in ethical lifestyle than I am. So we call them good people. If you look at the life of Job in the Bible, Bible claims him to be a righteous man. But he goes through a really, really bad you know, time. He loses all of his children. They all die. He loses all of his possession. He he his health fails. He goes through all that, but at the end of that, when God showed him his his sinfulness, his his falling shortness of of coming to that righteousness that God requires of him, he ends up praising God. At the end of the day, when, when God shows him how God is providing for him rather than how he thought God was cursing him, Job actually praises him. So here's the difference between Christian and non-Christian. The believers live with the hope of eternity. Unbelievers live without the hope of eternity. So when this tragedy happens, when these th really bad things happen, Christians should hold on to that eternal hope of the people who have died or who have faced that, that hard time would receive that, 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 that glory from God, receive the blessing from God in eternity, and that will become our hope to live on in this life in the midst of our hardships and hard times. Hope this gives you a hope in this life. It gives you more joy. gives you more reason to come to Christ and get to know more. All right. Have a great week and see you guys next week. Bye-bye.